Welcome back to week seven of the North American LCS. I'd like to welcome the team owners of our next match from TSM. We have Reginald and from Team Liquid. Well, we have Liquid. And uh, gentlemen, thank you for joining me first off. Appreciate the time you're willing to spend to answer some questions for us. I do want to start with you, Liquid, in that uh, the last game we saw between these two teams was a relatively close one. Your team did have control of the game for quite some time, but unfortunately came out with a loss. How did the team rebound after that and uh, kind of refocus coming into today's matchup? You know, the team has been kind of an emotional team, uh, as we saw from our Rebirth series and last split. But I think something changed this split where we don't let the small errors kind of dictate how we feel about the game. Uh, we controlled that game. We were winning that game against TSM, which made it a tough loss. But we know we're a better team. So we're just going to show that today. All right. Well, glad to hear. We're coming out strong <laughs> right out the gate. <laughs> oh, you know, Reginald, uh, your team, on the other hand, is coming off of two back-to-back -back losses here, which is actually the first time that that's happened to your team this year. So only speaks to the success of the team, but does mean or does beg the question, how is the team dealing with kind of falling into a rut, especially coming into a big game against Team Liquid? Yeah, so right now we're not too concerned with losses, primarily because we're trying out a lot uh, of new things in scrims. Uh, you know, we're uh, pretty much splitting half our scrims with Keith, half our scrims with Turtle, and we're just trying to figure out the final roster we want. And so these losses are expected um, because we've already secured our spot uh, in the gauntlet or playoffs, essentially. Um, we're a lot more open to trying a bunch of new things and just trying, you know, multiple types of communication because we have nothing to lose. You know, playoffs is really all that matters. And because we took first last split, we're in a really good position to go to Worlds, essentially. So we have a lot more room to, you know, try new things, uh, try, just try new comps, just really um, use LCS like practice, whereas teams like Team Liquid, have a very low chance of even going to world. So they need they need they need to use them. They need to use these they need to use these LCS matches as right. much as possible. Well actually let's explore a little bit why that is. You know, having a hand in the success of your teams is the su support staff that you guys have built. You know, you know, behind all these players there is quite a su uh, support staff and both of these teams are kind of at the forefront of building a lot of structure. So as owners, what do you guys look for as traits in support and coaching staff? Uh, in order to help build your players up, give them the best chance of success? You know, for us, it's, uh, it's mainly work ethic and aptitude. Um, we have our head coach. We've got our assistant coach. We have uh, a live-in analyst. We have position analysts. We have uh, someone that takes all the data and then creates graphs and charts so that they can disseminate that information to the team and actually has, like, an impact on their performance. So... Uh, it's kind of everybody working together, putting in the time, watching the matches, compiling the data. Um, for our coaches, it's you know it's a little bit of assertiveness. It's understanding the game. It's scouting other regions. It's coming up with an opinion. It's delivery to to the team. It's just a lot of different things. Um, so. So yeah, that's what I look for. Reginald, do you, as an owner, take uh, take cues from any other organizations around the world in terms of how you've structured your management and your support staff? Yeah, so I mean, we're always looking to improve our coaching staff. You know, whether it be an NA team, European team, or um, Korean teams, our coaching staff always talks to other coaches. You know, especially I think uh, Loco Doco has a really good relationship with Peter from TL. Uh, he's always talking to Korean coaches and even um, Fanatics coach. I forgot his name. But our Delor. coaching, yeah, Delor, he, our, our coaching staff is always talking to other coaching staffs because we know that we are we aren't the best, and we're always trying to you know improve and learn from other teams. And you have to really come in with that mindset in order to improve. You know, you're you're never perfect. So that's um, that's what I really like about my coaching staff is they're always trying to better themselves and they're always trying to you know look for new information and just new like different methods in order to just make a better team. So um, our team is really hardworking and. Um, so far, we've done an okay job this split, but hopefully when we get into playoffs, we will do better. Now, Steve, mm -hmm. you are an owner who has had a hand in the success of multiple organizations with you know, Gravity now at the forefront of the NALCS. Mm -hmm. You started as Curse Academy, but Liquid as well, finishing third last split on track to make the playoffs and fight for those top spots. Does it give you a sense of pride as an owner to know that you've had mm -hmm. this much success so far in such a young industry? I mean, absolutely, of course. It's... Um, you know, I, I took the approach uh, uh, maybe three years ago to have challenger teams, put pressure on the main team. Um, I've been able to kind of coach and mentor a lot of these athletes over time. To see them do so well in LCS is awesome. 
Uh, Davis is an amazing owner. He made some good decisions with moving Cop to coach. That's something that he expressed while he was on Curse Academy. So love to see that he's doing so well in that role. All right, yeah, definitely a lot of success coming out of that organization. Now, enough of my questions. We are going to jump over to the questions. They're going to get a little bit tougher here. Double down, bonus round. Earlier in the show, we asked our viewers to send us some of your questions so that we could ask you um, from Twitter. We'll start with at David King Kai, who asks, what has been the tough, or what have been the toughest things about owning an esports team? Reginald, we'll start with you. Um, I mean, there, there's just so many things that uh, have been tough for me, primarily because I started my team at such a young age. It was always trial and error, and learning, learning things on the fly and making sure that I didn't make enough mistakes in order to, like, you know, run my organization down the ground. But I think the, uh, the hardest part really is um, benching a player, Once, mm. primarily because I came from a player and we had really deep emotional ties with players. And so it, it's really hard when you have to tell someone, like, hey, you know, how you're performing just isn't just isn't cutting it. I think that's really the hardest part, primarily because you know we're spending like 10 to 12 hours with every single player every day, and at that point we're more than just you know coworkers. We're friends, and so it that that's just definitely the hardest part of owning a team. I'm sure you can sympathize with that same, that same issue. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, benching a player is always tough. I mean, um, it's it, it's it's never like a. a knowing absolutely what the right thing is to do. You're always saying it might be the right case to do this, um, as we saw with like the bunny and a special kind of situation. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. It also consumes you. You know, for me, it, I haven't had a personal life in probably three years you know, <laughs> or any social life, but it's, uh, it's a lot of work um, and it's a lot of work for the players too. You know, yeah. everybody's kind of all in with esports. Yeah, no, we know that for sure. There's a <laughs> lot. There's a huge time commitment to be in the professional esports scene. You know, next up we have at Shane Reyes who wants to know if you could take one player from the opposite team, who would it be and why? We're going to start over with you, Steve. Um, I don't think we need anybody from TSM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think we're good. I was going to say, based off the confidence that both of you were showing at the beginning of the segment, I feel like you guys are you're good with your squads. Same sentiment with you, Reginald? I mean, that's what that's what he said last play when he took a special. I mean, like, a couple oh. seasons ago, you know, so it's, it's a... So, I, I, don't, I don't know what you're saying, Steve, but, uh, I mean, right now for TSM, I think that we... Are, are having problems in terms of a communication side of things versus a player side, uh, you know, like a mechanical versus um, player performance. So mm -hmm. we don't need uh, to change out any uh, players right now. And especially we don't need any players from TL, of course. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Get some more. Right. Well, there, enough hype has been built now around this match. I want to get it, uh, get into it with our fans. So, again, gentlemen, both of you, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me here. Best of luck to the teams in this matchup. It will be an exciting one. And thanks, of course, to all of you, the fans who submitted questions. But now we're going to send it over to our casters for the game. On the way, we'll take a closer look at a player who's seen both sides of the TSM Team Liquid rivalry.